Hi, this is Scott Wine Giveaway. Today I want to show you some of the um, things that you can do in post-processing that I would consider mistakes. Um, and these are easily fixable. You, you can easily learn more about what each tool does to use it correctly. And um, it's not necessarily specific to Lightroom, but really any post-processing software that has these tools, this is uh, related to. And so these are mistakes. Um, these are things that, like I said, you could fix. So um, let's just dive into them. The first one, um, I'm gonna call Uber Vignettes. So quite often I'll see photographers doing this. And you can see that that's pretty harsh of a vignette. Looks like you're looking through a pinhole. That's not quite, um, the, you know, uh, an attractive, it's not attractive vignette at all actually. So my suggestion would be, um, if you can do a vignette, make it subtle and customize you know, go fine tune where the vignette really starts and ends and the feathering and all that fun stuff. Or don't even use the vignette tool. Instead, use the radial tool to create your vignette because you have a little bit more control over, you know, where that vignette is going to fall. So, um, you know, that's what I, one thing I would recommend uh, considering for Uber vignette mistakes. The next one is uh, oversaturation. So, you know, just going up with the saturation. Now look at the sun over here. Look at, this is a sunset over here. And just look how saturated and ugly that looks. Um, you don't really wanna do that. So my suggestion, in fact, is not use saturation at all. I would bring that down, let's say negative 10, and then bring up the vibrance because vibrant is a much more attractive um, color enhancement. So look at the before and look at the after. You get a little bit of color boost where you want, you know, in, in, in the right, just the right areas instead of it being um, just like this because <laughs> that doesn't look so good. Um, so yeah, go down a little bit in saturation and go up with the vibrance instead of just oversaturating. Next, blown out highlights. So you have clipping inside of Lightroom. You can see right here, you can actually turn on a clipping mask. Look at that right there. Um, and uh, you can actually see that if I go up in the highlights, it's clipping even more and more, right? So that's not that good. You can actually, um, if you hold down, if you turn off the clipping, hold down the Alt Option key and do the slider, you can also see that as well. Um, everything will be black that's not highlights and everything that is highlights will basically be red and white. And what is white is basically pure white. There's no detail at all. Um, you can also do that with the shadows which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, but uh, yeah, so highlights, and then also there's the uh, white points that also you'll see that happen. So watch what happens if I go all the way up. I just have no detail. So this is basically blowing out the highlights. Um, and if you can do this in the camera as well, not just in post-processing, so be careful with your exposure. Um, I tend to expose closer to the middle so I have more details to work with in the shadows and the highlights rather than, um, just exposing for one or the other, unless that's what I'm going for. If that's what you're going for, then do it. But just be careful and don't do it all the time. Do it for when the photo warrants something like that. All right, let's reset. Now, we talked about the um, blown out highlights. What about no details in the shadows? So just like I said, I showed you with the highlights, you can actually turn on clipping. See this blue over here? Let's zoom in a little bit. This is basically shadow areas with no detail at all. So um, just like Again, with the highlights, you can hit the Alt Option key in your keyboard for shadows and bring all that down. And now look at how much black this is. You can do the same thing with the blacks and watch this. If I bring this all the way down, basically the photo is unusable. It's just a silhouette. And you know, again, if that's what you're going for, then go for it. But it doesn't work with every single photo. So be careful with your shadow processing and exposure. Again, I like to expose closer to the middle in camera. Next is Clarity Overload. Clarity is a slider that has some really cool effect um, on textures, that, but it doesn't work all, this, all the time, especially not on the entire photo. Watch what happens when I bring this up. You are getting more detail in the city, but look at everything so crunchy. So instead of doing clarity on the entire photo overall like this, which is really is overload, try something a little bit different. Try brushing 
on just the building. So I'm going to do this real quick so you can see what I'm talking about. Just brush on the buildings and watch this. Okay, so I just brush on the building. Let's reset the mask. And I just bump up the clarity here. Now I'm just bringing out a little bit of the city with clarity. And even this 67, I, I sort of did this um, a little bit too much uh, to over exaggerate in the video, but this is this is too much for what it needs. Um, it still looks good, but it could still be too much depending on, you know, if you look closer, zooming in on each different part of the city skyline. So be careful with clarity overload. Reset again. Next one, whoa, sharpening. I just like uh, clarity, sharpening can be overdone. Watch what happens if I turn on sharpening, radius, and detail, and the entire photo is just not gonna be very attractive. Um, see this, it's, it's sharpening everything, including the trees down here that are darker, the sky is being sharpened, um, everything's up high. Now, radius and detail, you don't always want to, uh, you know, fine tune, or you don't wanna uh, overdo it as much as uh, the, the sharpening slider itself, the amount slider. Um, because it has some pretty interesting effects. Let me reset this so you can actually see what happens. Again, Alt Option key. Watch what happens with the mask. I'm gonna start with the mask and watch what I'm doing right here. As I slide it, the, everything in black is not gonna be sharpened. Everything in white is being sharpened. So I can fine tune this really, really, um, you know, fine tuned. Then I'm gonna take the the dropper and get it detailed right about here. You can see in the window over here. Again, watch right there. See it? It's being sharpened there. Now, um, I could even bring this back a little bit to get some more detail. Let's actually move that up here because this is be good for you to see what's going to happen next. Now, if I go up and down, you can see that there is a little bit of a change in the video, uh, in the uh, in the detail panel over here. But if I go to radius, watch what happens now. If I go up all those um, lines are being brought out even more. So it's being sharpened a lot. And then if I come out with detail, it's bringing back some of the texture that was behind there. So this part is super sharpened right now, um, as well as some other parts, because look at where the mask is. But now I can fine tune that mask even more if I wanted to. So um, the detail, make sure you pay attention to what's available to you with sharpening in whatever post-processing tool you're in pay attention to the sharpening. Lightroom also has um, a sharpening, you know, local adjustment, but you don't have the same sort of um, fine, con fine tune control that you do in the actual detail panel. All right, let's reset again. Noisy, noise, 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 noise. Okay, so I'm gonna bring up the exposure a little bit so you can see a little bit right here. Look at all the noise going on right here. There's a bunch of it. That's because the exposure was, uh, well, it's actually ISO 64, so it's not so terrible. Um, but because it's a longer exposure, you do see a little bit of noise going on here. And just be careful with noise. Again, there's a noise reduction tool. Um, so just be, be sure that you utilize that uh, that noise reduction tool and, and don't add noise to your photo because digital noise uh, afterwards never looks as good as digital noise or film grain um, in camera. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail about this, but just be wary about your noise. And if you um, don't like the Lightroom noise control, the noise reduction feature, look at On One, perfect, perfect effects. They have noise reduction built in. Topaz has a, a, a noise reduction. Nick has a noise reduction. Um, uh, and and, and uh, MacFun software now has a, a, a noise reduction software. So there's so many of them out there that you can um, reduce your noise. And Photoshop, of course, has more enhanced noise reduction than you can do in Lightroom as well. We said it again, and the next thing I want to talk to you about is dehaze. Now, this is new inside of Lightroom and Photoshop, but, and this photo is not very hazy. Maybe this next one is. Nope, still not hazy. Okay, so um, just to give you an idea of what it does, basically, imagine you had a very foggy day or it was misty and just a lot of haze going on that was sort of blocking the, the subject of your scene. You can actually slide this dehaze to, it would sort of look like that um, if it was hazy you can slide it to the right and basically cut through that dehaze. Now imagine your photo looked like this originally and you bring it all the way to this. So what I want to tell, talk to you about really in this one is, look at all this, look at all the, this ugliness that's coming out of here. So the dehaze tool is, is pretty powerful to break through that sort of hazy look, but the problem with it is right now in Lightroom, it's not a local adjustment. Right now in Lightroom, it's a global, it's the entire photo. In Photoshop, you can actually use the dehaze feature, the filter, the dehaze 
uh, filter and then mask away where you don't want it. So if you're going to use the dehaze, don't dehaze it on all. I suggest don't even use it in Lightroom at all unless you're using it just a little bit, just a couple notches and that's about it and that's enough to, to do what you need. Um, otherwise, if you need a lot of dehaze, do it in Photoshop and mask away where you don't need it. Now I got a little bit of a bonus one. This is more for fun. Um, this one is really uh, a personal preference more than than a just you know best practices. Um, if you look at the let's see the saturation, right? So let's say actually let's go here to color instead. So um, something that is common in the photography industry, which I personally don't like, is what's called selective color. So watch what happens if I um, go ahead and remove the saturation for red, orange, yellow, green. Let's leave the aqua and blue and then purple and magenta. Right now, all we have is a black and white photo with a little bit of blue in it, right? Let's reset that. And now let's do it where it's we're taking away everything but the reds. And take away, oops, we'll leave the orange because that way we'll leave orange and purple. So look at that. Now you have selective color. The city is basically black and white. Some of the cars and the signs have some color to it and the sky has color to it. This is not very attractive. So um, I would say don't do selective color. Unless you find a way to make it elegant and attractive, don't, don't do it on every single photo. Don't do it um, when you just don't know. Um, really be selective about that as well. So there you go. Those are a bunch of my best practices um, to get past your Lightroom mistakes. I am... Um, I hope that, or Lightroom and post-processing in general mistakes, I hope that you found this video um, useful and hopefully you will um, do some uh, better post-processing. So <laughs> thanks for watching and see you next time.